So we've been talking about hex, and uh, I've explained the basics of how the controller's layout works and the different parts of the GUI. Um, I glossed over two things. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is behaviors. Uh, the way behaviors work, it's a separate layer. I can get there by pressing this button a couple of times. Um, if you look in your settings menu, you've got this funky little rainbow graph, and they represent what a particular part is going to do, what a step in a part is going to do over the space of eight bars. So I'm going to leave the behavior chart the way it is. We'll come back to that in a second. And uh, let's just solo out our snare track. And we need to go back to the mute section to do that. So I'm going to mute everything else but the snare. And then we'll look at the snare. Let's add the snare on every floor. Not that we would ever do that, but we're going to do it right now. And let's start the sequence playing. And for whatever reason, I'm not hearing it. Oh, because the volume's turned down. There we go. So let's go back to our behavior page. There's our uh, length page. There's our behavior page. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically the way this works, um, I can assign different behaviors by pressing the button a certain number of times. Each behavior is a different color. So that's behavior A, behavior B, behavior C, behavior D, behavior E, behavior F, behavior G. Um, no behavior. When no behavior is assigned, you're going to hear the step every time. If I assign behavior 1, then I go and look at my behaviors chart here. And for behavior 1, on the first bar, it's going to trigger. On the second bar, it's going to trigger, and so on. Um, so let's change this around a little bit. Let's have it skip some bars. So we'll have it skip the second bar and the fourth bar. And on the sixth bar, we'll have it repeat. And hey, well, let's do the same thing on the eighth bar. And then we wait. Let's skip. Play. The next one will either be a skip or a repeat. That was a repeat. Now I can change what kind of repeat it is by going to the behavior graph on my GUI and changing the slider amount. And let's add all of these as that same behavior. That's a skip and a play. And let's speed it up a little bit. Skip again, play again, repeat. And the different values of the sliders are going to make different repeats every time. And I can randomize my behaviors and my rule bends uh, in the settings menu. So I'm going to randomize the rule bends. And now we'll get a bunch of crazy repeats. Okay, so that's basically how behaviors work. Um, the different behaviors, trigger is going to trigger. Uh, no action means it's not going to play if that behavior is set for that bar. Uh, random means there's a random chance for it to play based on where the slider's at and your roll bends. Um, sympathy, that's kind of tricky and will probably change, but the idea is that if a node is assigned to sympathy, and another note has the same value for the slider or within a certain degree from that slider, then it also will be triggered. Uh, dominate, uh, anything assigned to dominate is going to block out any other voices that are assigned on that same beat uh, for a period of time determined by the slider. Um, delay is going to delay it by an amount determined by uh, how high the slider is up. Repeat, you're listening to right now. And uh, Plink is going to send a particle to Plinko, any instances of Plinko that you have in your project if you happen to be using Maya Modular. You can get some crazy stuff going with that. Okay, so now let's talk about poly mode. Um, I'm going to mute this sequence. 
And let's move on to sequence five. Poly mode's only gonna work for you currently if you're uh, using Mac OS. Poly mode basically allows you uh, 16 more channels worth of outputs uh, for each part. So I'm on part five. If I go to my channel, uh, which is this bottom encoder here, and turn it to channel one, uh, the, my GUI tells me that I need to detect an instrument. That's because I haven't assigned my channels yet. Basically, there can be a different channel assignment for every single, uh, or sorry, there can be a different instrument assignment for every channel assignment. So you can have your drum rack plus 16 different instruments. So I need to add another instrument to this. Let's grab, uh, let's grab an operator and throw it in another track. Now, another prerequisite for this is that you need to have some place to send it. Um, you can send it out to external hardware if you want, uh, or use an external instrument. Uh, what I do is I use the IAC bus, and you can set up your IAC bus. Oh, no, we didn't want to do that. No, we definitely didn't want to do that. Um, you can set up your IAC bus in your audio MIDI setup, which is in your utilities folder. And you just need to make sure that the device is online. I've already set mine up, obviously. And then if you go to your MIDI settings in live, uh, you need to make sure that it is assigned for both track input, there it is, and output, there it is. Okay, so we've got that set up. One last thing to do. Uh, go to the settings in hex and assign your poly output port to the IAC bus or whatever port you want to use. Now, whenever I select a different channel, a uh, channel other than the plugins output, it's going to be sent to that channel that I just assigned in my poly out or to that port uh, that I assigned in my poly output port setting um, and on the channel that I have selected. So right now I have channel one selected and I need to select an instrument that I want to send or that I want to control for use with that channel. So I go over here to operator and I select it and I hit the capture button and it locks to the parameters. Uh, you'll see I'm now controlling the volume of the track that it's in uh, and the pan of the track that it's in with those two knobs and I have control over some of the other stuff uh, with my top knobs. And uh, these, only your top four knobs are going to control parameters uh, for your poly instruments. The second two uh, right knobs in the middle are going to control the offset, the note offset. So we're going to start at 60 or thereabouts. And the uh, scalar mode that the part's playing in. So I have everything set up now. Um, now all I need to do is assign the input to my operator track to come from the IAC bus and the channel to be channel one, which is the channel I have it set on. And I'm gonna set my monitor to input and I'm going to go to my poly play mode or my poly record mode rather. <coughs> and now I can record a sequence by pressing keys. And that should actually play. But, uh, I don't know, I never implemented that. It'll be in the next version, what can I say? So there's my sequence that I just recorded. Um, I can create another sequence really easily. Ooh, I changed that setting when I was doing the tutorial earlier. Let's put it back to where I like it, single preset. So now I can go to another preset and create another sequence. Ah, my channel got changed. And my poly offset up to 60. I think we just found a bug, boys and girls. And then go back to my first preset. Okay, so here's the cool thing about poly mode. Not only can you create a sequence, 
but you can trigger that sequence like you can in Polygome. So if I go to my poly play mode, I'm listening to the sequence that's in the bass buffer, but I can also add another sequence on top of it. And I can hold that sequence like I could in Polygoma by pressing the far right button. And I can change parts like I can in Polygoma. The cool thing about this is I can do the same thing with that sequence with any of the rhythms that I have stored in my other parts. So if I go to the kick drum part and also change it to channel one and unmute it, Just offset. Now keep in mind whenever you're in poly mode, if you have stuff held in your poly play bank, it will continue to play even after you mute the sequence. I did this so you can play the sequence but not have it playing in the background uh, if you don't want to. So anyway, that's the simple of it. Uh, not that it's simple in any way, but it's also not complicated. Basically, once you get all of your channels assigned and you get instruments on everything, uh, you only have to set it up once. It's stored with your project, and the next time you come back to it, everything will be there. Have fun with that. <laughs>